I had to laugh when I was preparing for this lesson. I ran across a story of a little elementary schoolgirl, as it was told, who was taking a test on human anatomy, and uh, she failed it. She was the only one in the class that failed the test. Uh, and this is why, and this is how her test read. The human body is composed of three parts, the brainium, the borax, and the abominable cavity. That's an important word. The brainium contains the brain. The borax contains the lungs, the liver, and living things. The abominable cavity contains the bowels, of which there are five, A, E, I, O, and U. I love that story. I loved um, how in education we often misunderstand things or we get it wrong. And um, unfortunately, when we're growing up, when we're going to school, we see getting it wrong as something negative when in reality it's a teaching point for us, isn't it? It's where we can identify what we've learned and what we still need to work on. It's not just that we um, pronounce the word wrong and make it the abominable, like the abominable snowman, right? But we now think the bowels include A, E, I, O, and U. And when we talk about God and what God tries to teach us, I think we all can relate to this girl. Sometimes we get it right and sometimes we fail the test. The good news is scripture is filled with people who took tests and passed and failed. And the ones that passed the greatest test of their life, those people who are men of faith that we look to, David and Goliath, Abraham, Moses, all of them failed other tests in their life. Isn't that great to know? In their education, as well, while they walked with God, they passed some and they failed others, but they learned from those failures. This morning we're talking about education. We're talking about a God who teaches us. He teaches what we are called to do, but he also teaches us what a good student does in response to that education. I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of people who graduated, and I'm not going to say the degrees and hurt anyone's feelings in case it was your degree, but they graduate with what's called a nothing degree, right? In other words, you went to school, you paid all of this money, you get this degree and you walk out and either you're not going to find a job or your job's not going to make enough money to pay it back, right? And we see a lot of people who walk out of school and don't even use what they've learned. It becomes useless. I have several people that I know that went to Harding University with me and now they work at Starbucks. It's okay, they just paid 60 grand for an education to go work at Starbucks, which they could have done without the 60 grand education. But the reality is, God teaches us. I want to look at Scripture to see the methods first that God uses to teach us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, now this may be one of the most famous texts used, which is why I wanted to use it. Starting in verse 10, it says, However, you have followed my teaching my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, my suffering that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and at Lystra, which uh, persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. You, however, have followed my teaching. Paul is writing this letter. He's writing to Timothy, but he's also writing to the church that Timothy serves here. And he is writing that, Timothy, you have followed my teaching. You've been my student. And we'll get to that part at the latter half of this lesson. But he continues to say in verse 12, And indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture, and this is the famous part, right? This is the scripture we quote without giving it any context. All scripture is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Not equipped to judge and condemn everyone, right? 
Not equipped to fight and argue about Scripture, but equipped for what? Every good work. You see, Paul is writing Timothy. We often take this out of its context and use it in, yes, a good way of saying, look, this is why we ought to read the scriptures. But here what Paul is telling Timothy is, you have watched me do all of these good works and still get persecuted in doing them. You have followed me on Twitter or on Facebook or on Snapchat and seen every moment of my life play out before you. You know me. You know what I teach. You know what I've been through. He begins with that. And then he talks about, and if you desire to live a godly life, Timothy, you're going to get persecuted. But then he reassures Timothy, not only that things will just get worse for him and for the church, which it did if you know history, but he says even when things get worse, when they go from bad to worse, basically, He says, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it. And then he talks about what is it you've learned. And he says the sacred scriptures, which to them would have been the Old Testament. He says, look, I've taught you, but you also know the Old Testament, as we call it. Live it out. It is useful for teaching, for for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. He says, Timothy, you've seen how I've played my life out. You will be persecuted if you endeavor to live a righteous life. But you have the tools to function within that. And even though you will be persecuted, you have the word of God to equip you to equip others. So use it. And so there's so many things we can go through in this text, but I want to look at three ways in which God teaches us, as outlined in this. First of all, we see that God teaches us through human example. God teaches you and I about him, about how to live, about righteousness through human example. Uh, A good friend once instructed me, befriend those you want to be like. If you want to teach Surround yourself with great teachers. If you want to be successful, meet successful people who will act as a mentor. And if you want to be godly, submerge yourself in the lives of those who are dedicated to God. Why? Because God teaches us through other human beings. You become those whom you hang around. You become those whom you hang around. If you find yourself in good company, you're going to do godly things. If you find yourself always hanging around the bad, you're going to do bad things. Now, that doesn't mean we can hide because even Scripture says we're not allowed to hide. We're to go out into the world. It doesn't mean we don't have non-Christian friends, but we have to understand that God teaches us through human example, and we need to pick the right examples that God's working through so we can learn the lessons of God. You who have children, how often do you encourage them to go hang out with one of the shepherds of this congregation? You want to know why I do what I do for a living? There's a variety of things, but one of those things is I was encouraged to get close to the shepherds of my church growing up. And it turned out they were actually real people. They weren't these uh, supermen when it comes to godliness. They were people who had lived life and had wisdom. And God taught me a lot through those shepherds. I surrounded myself with both Christians and non-Christians, as everyone else does. But I choose to take the example of the Christian, those who are righteous, because those are the lessons God is teaching us. Those are who God works through in our life. We must surround ourselves with, I'm sorry, the point was that the people we surround ourselves with will become our instructors on how to live and succeed in life. You want to be poor for the rest of your life? Hang around poor people for the rest of your life. I mean, isn't that the truth? You want to misuse money? Hang around people who spend every dime they get. I understand there are circumstances that that is not why people don't have money. But if you want to learn how to never have money, 
Find the person that can't go a day without going to the mall and shopping and spend your whole life with them. How much money are you going to save? You want to be righteous. Find someone who's godly, who's righteous. Not perfect. No one's perfect in this room. But find someone who's righteous and hang around with them. Find someone who makes good choices and hang around with them. Because God instructs us through other human examples. He teaches us. This is especially true of the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus was not only allowing God to come and um, understand how we live and how we feel, but it was also a demonstration on how we should live. He was fully human. Through a human being, God chose to teach us how to live. We read in verses 10 and 11 that Timothy had followed everything about Paul. His aim in life. In other words, what is his goal in life? What is his faith like? What is his patience like? What is his love like? What is his steadfastness or faithfulness like? How did he handle persecution? How did he handle suffering? Look at that in Paul. Look at that in Christ. Look at that in godly men and women in your life. And learn something from it. We all can learn from one another. It's similar to what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. What is Paul saying? It's not, look at me, I'm I'm perfect. In fact, Paul in Romans talks about he sins all the time and he struggles with it. Isn't that great? It humanizes Paul, doesn't it? I didn't hear that one preached very often growing up. But Paul says, I strive to be like Christ. Therefore, you ought to take my example and you ought to strive not to be like me, but to be like Christ. Can we say that to other people? Not mimic what you do, but mimic the way you strive to be like Jesus. The way you strive to understand, the way you strive to learn from Christ. God uses the example of Jesus and other godly men and women to teach us what it means to be his disciple. But he also teaches us and instructs us through life experience. We have all, if you're old enough, have had something go on in life that God used to teach us something. And we probably will have more. He teaches us through life experience. Sometimes this can be one of the most unfun ways to learn, right? We've all done something that we look back going, that was not the brightest move to do. We all look back and say, that moment right there, you know, I was pretty dumb right there. I, I, I should have done it this way or that way. We learn not just through other humans, but we learn through our own experiences that we are put in, for better or for worse. Sometimes we learn through positive experiences. Going back to what my friend said, you want to know how to grow a church, you go talk to growing churches. You want to know how to kill a church, you go talk to dying churches, right? You want to know the hard way, you live it out without investigating from anybody and find out which one you are, right? It might come out you're going in a good direction, it might come out you're in a bad If you do something good, God can teach you through that experience of what to do. But unfortunately, if you're like me, you often learn more so of what not to do through your experiences. God teaches us through the experiences we live out, for better or for worse. I believe that's why Scripture says God can take pretty much anything and work it around to His plan and work it into glorifying Him in the long haul. That doesn't mean we don't have the ramifications of that, right? But it does mean that we can learn from our experiences. Scripture is filled with people who learned from their experiences. One of those experiences we have, 2 Timothy 3, we read verses 12 through 13, but again it says, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted, while the evil will get worse and worse. God teaches us through our hardships, not just our successes, but our failures, our hardships, our persecutions, 
the things that happen to us that we have no control over, God uses those to teach us. But he also teaches us through his word. God instructs us through the word of God. You see, I think we understand that he instructs us through others and that we have that down, hopefully, where we're watching those who we view as being godly and learning from them what God has to teach us. Hopefully we understand God uses our own experiences and hopefully we learn from those experiences. What scares me, church, is very few people today open the word of God to learn from the word of God. Because if you do not interpret other people's actions and your own experiences through the word of God, you don't actually know what he's teaching you. The word of God is the filter. It's the manual for the interpreting of everything that happens in life. It's the standard. God instructs us through the word of God. We had a great class this morning in the young family class talking about studying the word of God and how often do you study the word of God and what are the issues that get in the way of studying God. And let's just be honest. They're all excuses that we could overcome if we would just put our mind to do it. It is. The reality is God instructs us through his word. His word is how we interpret whether these actions we watch other people do are positive or negative. The lessons God is teaching us is what to do or what not to do. It's through his word that we look at our own life experiences and identify whether it's God teaching us what to do or what not to do. Because sometimes when we feel feel like a failure, God looks at it as, as a success, right? Because our ways are not God's ways. But how do we know that? It's not guess. It's God's word. God's word is the source of knowledge and truth. This is what Jesus proclaimed as he lived life in front of us to be an example to us. And it's what the Holy Spirit reminds us of as we go through our own experiences in life. However, as students, we must not only understand how he instructs us, we must understand how we respond to that instruction. A student is one who emulates their teacher. We saw this already, but a student emulates or they they copy what their teacher does. A student emulates their teacher. You see, back then it wasn't uncommon for students to follow their teacher around. This happened often in the Greco-Roman world. Whether it's before Christ, after Christ, we've heard of people like Plato and Socrates, and they had their students, and their students didn't just say, I'm going to go listen to a lecture. They followed those individuals around daily, learning from them. It was their method of teaching. And not only did they listen to what they said, but they began to talk like they spoke. And they began to walk like they walked and they began to act how they acted because the goal was to become a carbon copy of that teacher. Church, that is what Christian means, carbon copy of Christ. See, Christ-like doesn't do it justice. Christ-like means you're similar in some ways. That's not the point of being a Christian, is it? You look at Scripture, you are to become a carbon copy to emulate Jesus Christ. Do everything possible. In Luke chapter 6, verse 39 through 40, Jesus told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be what? Like his teacher. Now, this isn't the term like that we use when it means somewhat similar. This means carbon copy concept. In the Greek. He will be like his teacher. And then he talks about this. Basically, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you then say to your brother, brother, let me take that speck out of your own eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take out the log, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. What is Jesus' point here? It is not, don't judge me. It's what? you got to go back up to the previous couple of verses. It is, your job is to be a carbon copy of Jesus. Until you accomplish that, don't start nitpicking everyone else's attempt at it. 
As a good student, we are to emulate our teacher. We are to live as he lived. We are to walk the way he walked. We are to talk the way he talked. We are to do things in the way Jesus did them. And often what the problem we have is we read the Apostle Paul and we begin to interpret Jesus through our understanding of the Apostle Paul. Do you guys see the problem with that? In reality, what I'm getting at is it's not just about the Bible interpreting the Bible. It's about the Bible being interpreted through Jesus Christ. For after all, Jesus is God. So instead of interpreting the teachings of Jesus through Paul, let's look at Paul's teachings and say, okay, how can we understand this based upon Jesus' teachings of Scripture? And when we do that... Then we can say, okay, now how else has God taught us through Moses and through all these other people? And how does Jesus interpret those things? And how do they all come together to give us an understanding of not who Paul was, per se, but who Jesus Christ was? Not what Paul wanted, per se, but what Jesus Christ wanted. In fact, Paul argues this all the time. In fact, in one place, Paul says, this is my opinion, not that of Christ's. Why? Because Paul wanted to understand we are to follow and emulate Christ. He is our teacher, so he is the one that we become a carbon copy of. If you want to become fully like a teacher, we must become like the one who is teaching us. Look like him, talk like them, him, act like him, not other people. Neil Cole, who wrote Ordinary Hero, when writing about making disciples, writes this, we must make every copy from the master. In other words, we need to make every disciple a first disciple, not a second, not a third, not a fourth. Our commission is not to make disciples of you and I, but disciples of Jesus Christ. And there is a very big difference between the two. We're going to go back into that tonight, so come tonight. Look, by the way, I know that you may have to miss a whole 30 minutes of the Super Bowl, but you will survive the sun will come up tomorrow i promise and neither one of the teams are from houston so we're good right <laughs> while a student should become a carbon copy of their teacher they must also thirst for the knowledge of truth we're not going to read it but in acts chapter 17 you see the story of the bereans and paul was teaching and what did the bereans do they said, Paul, we love you, brother, but we don't trust you. In fact, Scripture says they opened up the Scriptures to verify everything Paul was saying. Which is, by the way, important because at the end of the day, Paul can't vouch for them when they stand before God, can he? It's not just about becoming a carbon copy, but it's about thirsting for that knowledge and wisdom from the teacher. It does no good to say, here is an outstanding teacher to listen to and to mimic and to follow if you don't thirst to have an understanding and to get to know that teacher and you don't thirst to actually learn from that teacher. Do you thirst for the truth? Do you thirst for God's wisdom, for God's knowledge? Do you thirst for the education God offers you? If you do, you're going to look for those examples through other people. You're going to look for those lessons out of your own experiences, but you're also going to look in the Word of God to better understand those examples and those experiences that you have. The Brians did not only want to know the accuracy of what was said, but they also acted upon what was said. They did something while Paul was teaching. A student is one who promptly integrates the knowledge and truth that they've learned. How do we respond to the lessons God teaches us? We have to integrate them. What use is knowledge if you never put it to use? There's no point. We are called to be people who learn from God and put it into practice in our own lives. This is found over and over and over again within the scriptures. Howard Hendricks notes, the name of the game in education, well, he's talking about Christian education, but it can be said about the education from God. The name of the game in Christian education is not knowledge, but active obedience. What are we more focused on? It's not just enough to know about God. The demons know who God is. Satan knows a lot about God. 
It's not just enough to know. It's what we do with that knowledge is what is important. Do we promptly integrate what lessons we learn into our lives? Or do you just say, oh, you know, that's nice, and then put it on a shelf, and we never pull that lesson back out again? We never act on that lesson. Ashton read this uh, before we began the sermon. He read about the Ethiopian eunuch. You know what I love about that story? The Ethiopian is not only traveling all the way to Jerusalem when he's not even a Jew to go worship God when he can't even stand within the temple courts, but as he's reading, he stumbles across a passage in Isaiah and he's struggling with it. Philip comes up to him and he says, can you help me understand this? Philip says, sure I can. So Philip began from there and proclaimed to him the good news of Jesus. And then if you remember what happened in the reading, the Ethiopian said, oh, that's great knowledge. Thanks, Philip. See you later. No, he acted on that knowledge. He said, well, Philip, hold on a minute. Philip, j- just hold on, Philip. I want to hear more, but look, there's water right there. Can I just go get baptized? Why? Because he learned something and he said there's no use in putting it off. Because God has always called for his teaching to be integrated into the daily life of his disciples. We are taught lessons, not just to sit them on a shelf or file them in the back of our minds as knowledge gain, but to have knowledge that produces something in our life. To be lived out. The purpose of our education from God is preparation is preparing us to fulfill the Great Commission, preparing us to equip others to help in that endeavor, preparing us to make disciples who make other disciples. Jesus walked among us to demonstrate how God desires us to live. He walked among us to teach us. He walked among us to carry our burdens of sin and mistakes. But he also walked among us so that he could offer a chance at hope, forgiveness, new life, and a godly education. An education that changes your life forever. The question this morning is, what are you going to do with the education? What are you going to do with the knowledge that Jesus offers? New hope and new life. Are you going to act on it if you haven't done so? Or are you going to file it in the back of your mind and say, you know, I know that I need to come know more about Jesus. I know that I need to study more about God's word. I know that I I don't really understand Jesus and God, and I need to understand Jesus and God. And I know that maybe that I know you should be baptized, but I'm not really feeling it. Are we going to just file it in the back of our heads and walk away? Are we going to do something with that knowledge this morning? Are we going to be a Christian who knows we need repentance or who knows we need to be equipping others or who knows maybe we haven't been doing what God has asked us to do all along? And are we going to file it in the back of our head? Are we going to say today is the day that I change and I do something with the knowledge that God has given me? Church, God teaches us every day through his word through our experiences, and through godly men and women that surround us. But God leaves it up to you with what you do with that education. This morning, I want to offer you the opportunity to do something with that. If you would like the prayers of this congregation, if you would like to commit to Christ or know more about Christ or know more of God's knowledge and wisdom so that you can know how to implement that, we offer you that opportunity, but we can't read your mind. We simply ask, just come forward and let us know as we stand and sing this song.